We've discussed the sentencing of Donald Trump's personal attorney, Michael Cohen, to three years in prison. We talked about that at the top of the show. There's a funny little sidebar story to the Cohen sentencing, which involves Fox News host Sean Hannity. We learned during the Michael Cohen fiasco that Sean Hannity had a relationship with Michael Cohen. Initially, Cohen said he represented Sean Hannity. We learned that Cohen had only three clients, Donald Trump, Hannity, and one other party that I can't remember offhand. Hannity denied it, saying, no, 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 Cohen never formally represented me, but I would sometimes bring him legal, legal questions where I just wanted like his general opinion on some kind of informal basis. But in court, Cohen revealed that Hannity was a client of his. So I tend to believe that Hannity's the one lying about this. The point is Hannity liked Cohen at some point. Can it Hannity knows Cohen and Hannity has on at least an informal basis, if not more formal, sought legal advice from Michael Cohen. There were numerous stories that Hannity did on his show about Michael Cohen where he didn't make any mention of the fact that he is uh, interviewing someone or talking about someone who has given him legal advice, who he has a legal relationship with. So there's a connection there that would be relevant to his commentary about Cohen. He never made that clear. Just hours before Michael Cohen was sentenced, sentenced to three years in prison yesterday, Sean Hannity was caught deleting a bunch of tweets related to Michael Cohen. Hannity deleted close to 300 tweets, including at least five specifically related to Michael Cohen. Of course, we still have access to these. Some examples include that infamous denial that Sean Hannity made of Michael Cohen's representation of him, saying, quote, Michael Cohen has never represented me in any matter. I never retained him, received an invoice or paid legal fees. I have occasionally had brief discussions with him about legal questions about which I wanted his input and perspective. Now, of course, look at the language being used there, right? I he never represented me in a matter. Well, that has a specific legal meaning. I never retained him. OK, I never received an invoice. I never paid legal fees. Well, what if it was Hannity's business partner who did or what if it was a shell company controlled by Hannity for his real estate holdings, which paid Michael Cohen? We just don't know. My point is we can't glean anything from this tweet about the spirit of the relationship. But that tweet has since been deleted by Sean Hannity. Another example of a deleted tweet from Hannity, Dan Bongino and Rick Unger join me next to debate the media's coverage of the raid on Michael Cohen's office. Why delete that one? Well, that was a segment during which the entire uh, investigation of Michael Cohen was written off as politically motivated nonsense. Not a great tweet once the guy's been sentenced to three years in prison. Um, now, a counter argument that I've seen floating around, Pat, is David. He deleted like more than 250 tweets. Only five had to do with Cohen. This isn't about deleting tweets that have anything to do with Cohen. He's just deleting old tweets. Give me a break. Hannity is smart enough to realize, Pat, that if you don't want it to seem like the point is to delete tweets about Cohen, even though you did it as his sentencing was going on, you also delete a, a bunch of other tweets that are relatively innocuous. That's a, that's a known method. Yeah, and you got to give him a little bit of credit because it's somewhat clever. Instead of just deleting the tweets having to do with Michael Cohen, you also delete some 100, 200 innocuous ones. I, I like it. It's a good strategy. Yeah, it's, a, it's an obvious strategy, but it is one that other people have also employed. Now, I want to go back to the content of one of these tweets. Um, Sean Hannity's net worth is reportedly in the hundreds of millions or uh, close to 100 million. It's an insane amount of money. His salary is by some accounts more than twenty five million dollars a year. Why is he lo running legal questions by Michael Cohen? Like whether it's on a formal or informal basis, isn't it a little weird that Hannity is even going to Cohen for advice? Does that not suggest that there may be more to this relationship than simply Hannity finds Cohen to be a competent attorney? Yeah, didn't at one point Hannity said he said that um, like maybe he gave Cohen 10 bucks at a party sometime. If you're worth like tens of millions of dollars, what is ten dollars to you? That's just not a transaction that would happen among two rich folks. It's a very, very strange thing, and I think that there is much more to it. And uh, in any case, the entire apparatus is in panic here. I was talking to a friend who works in media in Washington, D.C. yesterday. And she told me that she's been talking to people behind the scenes and they are in full panic about how much do you want to distance yourself from what's going on? 
but at the same time, you don't want to go so crazy distancing yourself that you draw more attention to yourself, if, if that makes sense. And a lot of people are, are sort of in that uh, situation right now, and I don't have advice for them. My, my advice would have been not to have become involved in the first place. Today's program sponsored in part by Blinkist.com slash Pacman. I've talked about Blinkist before. It's this awesome app that I've been using for several months now. And what it does is take the best and most critically acclaimed nonfiction books and condenses them into 15 minute audiobooks that you can listen to in one sitting. You could listen to 10 books in an afternoon. I know that many in our audience want to expand their horizons and learn more about all sorts of different topics, but we're mostly limited by time to some degree. I know I'm not able to read all of the books that I want simply because I've got other stuff going on, and that's why Blinkist is such a great tool. You can absorb the most important information and insights from a book in one sitting, and our audience can get a seven-day free trial by going to Blinkist.com slash Pacman. If you're watching on YouTube, click the link in the video description. And after that free trial, if you like Blinkist, and I think you are going to like it, you can continue enjoying thousands of condensed audiobooks for about five bucks a month. Go to blinkist.com slash P-A-K-M-A-N.